It is said that because of its great beauty, God kept a place for himself near the Black Sea. But according to legend, he gave it to the Georgians to thank them for inviting him to their celebrations when the earth was divided up into its different lands. Since then, Georgia has protected its artistic heritage and been able to maintain the vibrancy of its unique traditions. It has conserved a biodiversity greater than that of some continents and has a magnetism which draws people back to visit over and over again. The national motto, power comes from unity, reflects the wisdom of a people who have suffered many invasions and armed conflicts, the last one in 2008. Although as small as Switzerland, Georgia is big in all aspects. A progressive nation, European in attitude, and Western in spirit, a real Caucasian country with the joy of the Mediterranean. A table filled with delicacies and a jubilant atmosphere. Everything is ready for an ancient ceremony, the Supra, in which the Tamada, or Master of Ceremonies, will deliver a series of poetic and philosophical messages. The custom of toasting, the origin of which is attributed to the Georgians, is the grand finale to their love of wine. The vast vineyards of the eastern region of Cajeti, home to the largest wineries in the nation, are a clear illustration of this passion. In Georgia, there are a considerable number of grape varieties, more than anywhere else in the world. Most of them are used to make high-quality wines, as prestigious as Tsinindali, Mukuzani, Teliani, or Napareuli, all of which have received gold, silver, and bronze medal awards in international competitions. The care of the grape pickers and the meticulous selection process during the harvest have led to Georgian wines enjoying worldwide recognition. According to archaeological research, Georgia is at the very cradle of wine culture, as grapes have been cultivated in this area for 7,000 years. It may even be true that the generic word for this most ancient of alcoholic drinks is derived from the Georgian word gvino. And in some marani, or traditional wine cellars, such as this one in the town of Gurjani, grapes are still pressed by foot in wooden vats to avoid crushing the seeds, which would give the wine a bitter taste. In Kakheti, almost everything revolves around wine. Proof of this is the 16th century wine cellar in Velistzige, in which the traditional kvevri are still used, clay barrels buried underground that maintain a constant temperature to ensure optimal fermentation.
These fossilized grapes from the Neolithic age and the discovery of vessels from the third century BC prove that since prehistory, wine has played a key socioeconomic role in this region. And through wine, Georgia has made an important contribution to world culture. Because the supra can last for hours on end, the moment has come to interrupt the festivities and launch yet another intimate, heartfelt toast. I was <laughs> told that I was <laughs> going to go to the supra. I was 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 ეს ქალაქი გიყვართ. მოდი ჩვენ საყვარელ ქალაქს გაუმარჯოს. გაუმარჯოს. Tbilisi, founded as a fortress city in the 5th century, is the nation's capital. Its largest city and has been admired by famous people such as Leon Tolstoy and Alexander Dumas. Situated at a strategic crossroads between Europe and Asia, it has been invaded by Persians, Byzantines, Arabs, Turks, Mongols, and Bolsheviks, none of whom were able to crush the energetic and artistic creativity of a people who considered dance to be an expression of Caucasian identity. It has been over 1,500 years since King Vakhtang I Gorgasali hunted with his hawk in these lands. The hawk swooped down upon a pheasant and wounded it. After landing in a river of thermal waters, the pheasant then healed by itself and flew away, as if nothing had happened. The king, impressed by the healing effects of the waters, ordered the construction of a city that, over time, has become a multicultural metropolis with over one million inhabitants and in which over 100 distinct ethnic groups coexist in peace. Every corner of Tbilisi is quite captivating. Its bewitching spell is cast over the whole of this safe and friendly metropolis in which guests are considered a gift from God. The Georgian capital is leading the way in the country's development. It is an example of urban harmony in which classical architecture and Art Nouveau mix wonderfully together. Baths from the 12th century can be found under the Narikala Fortress in the Abanutubani district. They possess the natural properties of sulfur waters, as King Vakhtan observed when he founded the city of Tbilisi, which was first called Tbili, an old Georgian word meaning warm springs. Travelers who journeyed throughout the east Describe the pleasure obtained from combining the oriental bath with a massage. The Muscovite writer Alexander Pushkin had one such bath and said, I didn't feel even the remotest pain, but an astonishing sense of relief. The feeling is indescribable, and the hot soap envelops you as if it were air. Near the sulfur baths, there is a group of buildings that symbolize the country's tolerance. The only mosque in the world in which Sunni and Shiite Muslims pray together. The great synagogue of the Jews, who after the Ottoman Turk invasion of the city of Akhaltsikhe, resettled in Tbilisi towards the end of the 19th century. 
Vasiuni, or Georgian Orthodox Dormition Cathedral, site of the Catholic Patriarchs of Georgia until the consecration of the Sameba, or New Cathedral of the Holy Trinity. The Armenian Church of St. George, in which the poet Syed Nova, the King of Songs, is buried. And the Catholic Church of the Assumption. At the end of the harvest, colorful folkloric celebrations take place in the winemaking areas. These are an expression of the sociability, optimism, and unbridled joy that comes from living in an open and prosperous country. A demonstration of passionate national pride, they illustrate how Georgians love to celebrate their strong sense of identity. Their dances, full of passion, leave a lasting impression. The fertile valley of Alazani, in the region of Cajeti, is renowned because of the excellence of its grapes and because it is the source of outstanding wines such as Ginza Marauli and Gurjani. But this area, with a mild and pleasant climate, is not only known for its fantastic wine production. Every day, a basic culinary work of art, known as shoti, is made in rural homes. Long loaves of rustic bread, baked in the traditional style. The women also make interesting desserts such as churchela, sausage-shaped sweets made with thickened white grape juice and filled with walnuts, which are then strung up and hung out to dry. Much of what is made or grown in the villages is sold in small markets, which are full of the color and freshness of agricultural products. Most noticeable are the smiling faces and the traders' great sense of humor, which make them extremely easy to deal with. This is one of the most gratifying rewards for any traveler visiting Georgia a country whose culture is so intrinsically tied to the grape. We have, I think, ideal location for grape growing because nearby there are very high Caucasian mountains and uh, down is Alazani Valley. And uh, we are well protected from the very, very cold winters and cold winds. Georgia is unique with its grape varieties. Uh, we have around uh, 400 different grape varieties. So consequently, the wines from these grapes are different from uh, wines uh, made in different countries because these grape varieties are unique and unique uh, uh, for Georgia and unique for the world. Signagi is one of the smallest towns in the country. But it has the second longest wall in the world after China. Urban regeneration and its popularity within the whole region of Cajeti have made it a delightful place to visit. This town, known as the City of Love, is also celebrated for its renowned grape harvest. Once again, Dancing confirms that one of the defining characteristics of the Georgian people is to have a good time and to enjoy life to the full. To 
uncover the first steps of human beings, we must go back to prehistory. The land south of Tbilisi were inhabited by Homo Georgicus, the forerunner of the first European civilizations. As proven by the remains of bones found in this unique archaeological site of worldwide importance. In Dvanisi we found earliest humans out of Africa. This skull is 1.8 million years old. This is oldest presence humans out of Africa. This is most primitive humans ever found in whole Eurasia. I think Dvanisi is a very important spot also for future tourism to tell story about first Europeans. It's a big international project with participation of several international institutions. It's very important for Georgian science and it's very important for the future of the Georgia. The city of Uplistike was founded 1,600 years before Christ. And although the Mongols destroyed a large portion of the original 700 caves, there are still some 270 left today that were inhabited by local tribes and monks until the latter part of the 18th century. In the third toast of the Supra, the eloquence of the Tamada continues. <coughs> The Zhvari Monastery is perched on top of the hill on which Saint Nino erected a wooden cross that symbolized the triumph of Christianity in Georgia. Nino arrived in Mitskheta, the ancient capital of Caucasian Iberia, during the first third of the first century AD. And because he cured Queen Nana of a serious illness, the queen converted and ordered the building of the first Christian church in her kingdom, Svetitskoveli, which was later transformed into a cathedral. They say it is built on top of where Christ's tunic is buried and above the tomb of Sidonia, the sister of a Jew who brought this sacred item of clothing from Golgotha. A cypress grew on the spot and was cut down. Saint Nino prayed, and his prayers led to one of the seven supporting pillars of the church becoming entwined with a fallen tree. Besides the font in which it is said that Midian III was baptized, the king who in the year 337 established Christianity as the official religion of Georgia, there is a symbolic replica of the Chapel of the Holy Sepulchre in Jerusalem, which makes Svetitskoveli the second most sacred place in the world. This cathedral, a world heritage site, also houses the tomb of Vakhtang I Gorgasali, that of the last Georgian king, Georgi XII, and of his father, Erekli II, the latter one decorated with a coat of arms and a saber. An interesting zodiacal sphere surrounding the figure of the Redeemer. 13th century frescoes and St. Sidonia's funerary monument. The Tusheti National Reserve is a model of administrative integration because it performs three functions. The conservation of 28,000 hectares of forest where animals as threatened as the Caucasian snowcock live. The protection of over 50 nomadic peoples along with their historically valuable monuments and the promotion of ecotourism. Tusheti, one of the most beautiful areas of Georgia, is in the northeastern part of the country. And a visit to any of the seven main villages, such as Shinako, makes for an unusual experience. These people, who speak their own dialect, enjoy a joyful isolation and live in rudimentary houses 
that preserve the traditional charm of the past. They are always welcoming, and they open their doors to visitors to share their everyday household tasks, such as preparing the delicious dumpling known as khinkhali, a ball of dough that is filled with spiced mincemeat and lightly twisted before boiling. The people of Georgia love to cook. A healthy attitude towards anything related to the pleasures of eating can be found everywhere. One just has to stroll through any of the noisy markets in the country to see the vast array of products destined to satisfy even the most demanding palate. Life in the city is completely different to surviving 2,000 meters above sea level. Shenako, in which only two families live throughout the year, has very harsh winters that make shepherding almost impossible. In the face of such adversity, most Tushetian nomads move to the warm flatlands of Kacheti, and their simple huts reflect their ability to adapt. Their strength and resistance are a tribute to the Georgian saying, a person can flower on a rock. Vashlovani National Park in the southeastern part of the country has a semi-desert ecosystem and is an excellent example of the varied biodiversity to be found in Georgia. Vashlovani's natural territory is Shekhni's Ertet in Tawari Mizezi, Iko, Akarsebuli, Punebri with the Heluk Lebeli, Sakmeshen Kormebis Arseboba, Sasho Wasaki, Hutasidan Yuxasi, Slam de Merkeops, Holo, Aris Indu Taum Rolisuba, Roman Tahnoaniba, Ataslam de Aris, Altamokrulia, Akizangam Dinare, Jalian Rao Peron, the Indemuri, Pion Rao Peroniba. This nature reserve was created by two Georgian scientists in 1935 and has recently been developed to make it suitable for ecotourism. In the park, there are some 60 species of birds, 45 species of mammals, and with luck, you can see an exceptionally rare male leopard of a species that was thought to be extinct. One of the 13 Assyrian Holy Fathers who arrived in Georgia in order to strengthen Christianity, David Gareja, is buried here. And on his tomb, there is a stone that symbolizes the one that the distinguished patriarch brought on his journey from the Holy Land. This is why it is said that a third of Jerusalem's holiness can be found in this group of 19 monasteries carved out of the rock, named after their founder, David Gareja, and that are still inhabited by monks today. This city, founded by David Gareja in the 6th century AD, has always been a center of constant pilgrimage. Notwithstanding Mongol aggression and bloody Turkish attacks, religious activity was only interrupted during the Soviet era, when the neighboring lands were used as a military base during the Afghan war.
Alongside the Mtkvari River and within the Chamske Javakhedi region, Vardzia is yet another monument carved out of rock. This rocky beehive is still maintained today by monks who have kept the memory of Queen Tamara intact. The woman who finished this great work 50 years after her father Georgi III began its construction as a place of refuge from invasions. As a girl, Tamara would get lost in these caves and would yell, Akvardzia, I'm here, uncle, which gave this place its name. This is a legend, but it is true that King Tamara, as she was known, turned Vardzia into a center for culture and art, so much so that it inspired the Georgian humanist Shota Rustavelli in his poem, The Knight in the Panther's Skin, an homage to courage and loyalty that fueled the flame for the national independence that was achieved at the end of the 20th century. One of King David Bagration's greatest successes was the creation of the monastic compound of Gelati. With this architectural marvel near the city of Kutaisi, David did justice to his name, the Builder, since one of his goals was to make Georgia into a center of culture. In Gelati, he brought together famous scholars to create an intellectual center that would flourish like a second Athens. It was the will of David himself, advocate of the golden age of his nation and tireless defender of multi-ethnic tolerance, to be buried at the entrance of the monastery so that all Georgians can step on the heart of one of their most beloved personalities. Joseph Stalin was another Georgian of great relevance to world history. He was born in this house in Gori, and in this armored car, he traveled across the whole of the ex-Soviet Union. The dictator's memorabilia are conserved in the museum of the city that, ironically, was founded by David the Builder, the most idolized king in Georgian history. Borjomi Karagauli National Park is in the center of the country, and it constitutes 1% of the territory of Georgia. The forested area has retained its natural state, and there are a number of animal species, such as the bezoar goat, which were quite numerous in the past, then completely disappeared here. Today, they are being reintroduced in these mountainous places in a system of semi-captivity. Borjomi Karagauli surrounded by the magical atmosphere of the Lower Caucasus, is the most visited park in Georgia and has a large number of recreational activities on offer. Borjom Kharagaulis Eronuli Park is in the Europe. Oriata Seksis Lidam Borjom Kharagaulis Eronuli Park is in the Pampark. Over the last tourist visit, the road to the Matulu Serono Park is located in the center of the tourist attraction. The park is located in the center of the tourist attraction. The park is infrastructured by the Sashwale Basrom, and the park is located in the center of the tourist attraction. The park is located in the center of the tourist attraction. This 76,000 hectare park has an abundance of attractions. It is also immensely enjoyable to visit the nearby villages, which alongside medieval relics and local handicrafts are home to incredibly dynamic people, even if they are 120 years old, like a Katerine this lady who was born in 1890. 
Caucasians live quite a long time, thanks to their physical strength. But besides this, they have a natural aid that most probably helps them increase their lifespan, matsoni, a thick yogurt that contains two very healthy lactobacilli, also used in homemade cheese. This isn't surprising, given that early in the 20th century, the Nobel Prize-winning Russian microbiologist Mechnikov demonstrated that regular consumption of yogurt was the cause of longevity in some Central European towns. In 1830, it was rumored that springs from the Borjomi Karagauli Natural Reserve contained healing properties. And 60 years later, the first bottling plant of the now world-famous Borjomi water was created. It's unique because of its naturally mineralized hydrocarbonated sodium and therapeutic qualities. Although the original fountain still works, Barely a trace remains of the luxury that characterized this place when it was the summer residence of the Russian imperial family, the Romanovs. Towards the Black Sea, in the Goderzi Pass, nomadic peoples farm the land in idyllic and misty mountainous surroundings. During the winter, the snowfall is heavy. And these people, most of the Muslims, come down from the mountains to the outskirts of Batumi, where the subtropical climate is more favorable for daily life. Historical tourism, a variety of year-round leisure options, and an abundance of sunny days are what resorts such as Kvaryati and Gonio have to offer. With long, quiet beaches, they are very popular among citizens of western Georgia. On the border with Turkey, they are also very close to Batumi, a coastal city with an appealing botanical garden, home to thousands of exotic plants and over 100 species of Caucasian origin. However, what really makes Batumi a cosmopolitan city is its port, the gateway to Europe via the Black Sea, and the external maritime link of a country which is prospering, thanks to its continuing cultural, artistic, and commercial exchanges with other countries. As well as the mythical statue of Medea, Batumi the administrative center for the Autonomous Republic of Adjara has impressive monuments that are spectacularly beautiful when lit up at night. is north of Anjara, in the western part of the country. And its name means the land of the restless, an appropriate term for a very active people who masterfully interpret an art form that is now inscribed in UNESCO's cultural heritage of humanity, polyphonic singing. It is full of beautiful melodies with a wide thematic repertoire that often proclaims noble Georgian values such as vitality, and peace. In Lake Palyastomi and the wetlands of Kolkheti National Park, 
over 21 species of migrating birds can be observed. Humans have lived in these marshlands for centuries, although it has been difficult for them to acclimatize to this rugged and hostile ecosystem that has been a site for diseases such as malaria in the past. Today, this natural paradise entices ecotourists and offers opportunities such as watching water buffalo, huge animals that demonstrate the great biodiversity of the park. Kolkreti is 29,000 hectares large and 10 to 15 meters deep in the marshy areas, which are made up of a sedimentary layer formed over 6,000 years. The Dadiani Palace Museum in Zugdidi belonged to a Georgian noble dynasty. Inside, there are a multitude of articles with historical value and objects related to Napoleon Bonaparte. Since Salome Dadiani strengthened the ties between Georgia and Europe by marrying Akili Murat, a nephew of the French emperor. A little further north, in Shvadi, is the tallest dam in the world, the Nguri Dam, which is 272 meters high. It is a hydroelectric fortress on the Nguri River, whose source is close to Shkara, the tallest mountain in Georgia. Svaneti is a remote mountain region in the north of Georgia, and Mestia is its most important town. For thousands of years, Georgian kings and powerful men hid their wealth in the inaccessible mountains of the region of Svaneti. Today, some of those valuable treasures are on public view in this museum that houses magnificent works of gold and silver, as well as icons from the 9th to the 13th centuries. The prominent towers of Mestia were used as lookout points, and during emergencies, they served as refuges for each family, who lived in the living quarters in their lower sections, and which even had stables for livestock. Currently, these medieval fortresses are still private property, and looking out the window, you can see a beautiful mountain range and mighty Mount Ushba, one of the most important peaks in the country. It is 4,700 meters high, and known as the Matterhorn of the Caucasus. It is one of the most difficult mountains to climb in Europe. Ushba in the Svan dialect means the road to nowhere. The northern peak was climbed for the first time in 1888, and the southern peak was reached by a Swiss-German-Austrian expedition in 1903. In Mestia, as in all of Georgia, the traditional supra takes place among families and neighbors. The toast is made, and often a goat horn is used for the wine. In keeping with tradition, women are praised before the wine is drunk straight down. Other customs in Mestia are just as exciting, such as bareback horse racing, in which the rider of the winning family may carry a golden lion-shaped banner. Families from all over the valley participate in these fun contests, and they usually coincide with the local festivals.
Ushguli also belongs to the mountainous region of Svaneti. It has defensive towers, which are World Heritage Sites. Some 70 families live in this area at the foot of Mount Shkada. At 2,200 meters above sea level, it is the highest inhabited community in Europe. Some people here still practice the unusual art of looking for gold in a more traditional way. It involves simply channeling the water and then extracting the tiny gold beads which stick to the wool of a sheepskin. This is an ancient custom that is rarely used today. This ancient method of obtaining the precious metal is related to the myth of Jason and the Argonauts, who left for the kingdom of Colchis, governed by Aetes, so that the mythical hero, after having successfully obtained the pelt of the Golden Fleece in the Caucasus, could reclaim the throne usurped by his brother Peleus. Many archaeologists claim that it was in the Mingrelia region where, according to myth, Jason found the Golden Fleece. In the 4th century BC, Nokalakevi, later a fortified city in medieval times, was the capital of the Agrisi kingdom. And according to stories by Prince Bakhushti Bagrationi, it even had a Dadiani dynasty palace in the 18th century. The rural atmosphere of some towns in Mingrelia, where animals return home by themselves at the end of the day, is a stark contrast to the sorrow of a region that has suffered the consequences of conflict in neighboring areas during the military uprising against President Shevardnadze, then with the fighting in Abkhazia, and finally during the South Ossetia War of 2008. Shatili is located in the narrow pass of Arguni, on the northern slope of the Great Caucasus a historical territory where St. Nino preached after the conversion of King Midian and King Nana. The intriguing beauty of the medieval towers and their considerable elevation, 1,400 meters above sea level, has made this town the ideal location for the shooting of many films about the lives of Georgian Highlanders. So 60% of uh, Georgian territory are mountains uh, and uh, there are lots of uh, fantastic opportunities for all kinds of people who like nature, who like mountains. There are five peaks uh, in the Caucasus in, on, in Georgia, over 5,000 meters, which gives really great opportunities for the amateur climbers. The part of mountaineering, uh, these mountains give a brilliant opportunity just for those who like nature. So you can do like two, three weeks continuous treks in a totally wild uh, environment. Uh, plus uh, there are lots of opportunities for rafting, canoeing, canyoning or any mountain activities. The Caucasus, in the shadow of Mount Kazbek, has given rise to a number of legends such as that of the rebel Prometheus. According to mythology, Zeus chained him to these mountains for stealing fire from the gods and giving it to the mortals. The Georgian military highway is also historic. It is the largest commercial route in Georgia, linking Tbilisi with Russia, and was used by Attila and later as part of the Silk Road. Georgia has two ski resorts. Bakuriani, to the south of Borjomi, at an altitude of 1,700 meters, has conditions that are ideal for family skiing. Gudauri, in the upper Caucasus, at 2,000 meters, has steep slopes which will satisfy the most extreme athletes.
The Hindu writer Kalpana Sani said, Some countries attract one instantly. Georgia seduces you the moment you set your foot on its soil. And the truth is that this is what one feels even before setting foot in Tbilisi, a city that, although it has been ransacked and destroyed some 30 times in the last 1,500 years, still conserves its remarkable spirit. Built in the 5th century, and with the Mtkvari River running through it, Tbilisi is not only the capital of Georgia, but it has always been considered the great metropolis of the Caucasus. Today, distinctive buildings stand along Rustaveli Avenue. Here we find the Morisco-style opera and the Rustaveli Theater, site of rehearsals and performances of the Suhoshvili Georgian National Ballet, the only folklore ensemble in the world to perform at La Scala in Milan. The final dance performed had three encores to incessant ovations. The curtain was raised 14 times, which was a record. No one had anticipated such overwhelming success. <laughs> Tbilisi, with a population of over 1,300,000, is an elegant and welcoming city. It encompasses the spirit of the whole of Georgia, a forward-looking country which has literacy levels above the European average thanks to its excellent educational system. All the signs point to Tbilisi and Georgia in general undergoing strong development in the 21st century. This is a unique nation, which besides its distinctive alphabet and Kartvelian language, one of the oldest in the world, has left the world a legacy of artists, such as Niko Pirosmani, the self-taught painter who chronicled daily life in Georgia towards the end of the 19th century. Nowadays, Tbilisi continues to expand non-stop. The city changes, but its diversity remains, because for centuries, Georgians, Armenians, Jews, Kurds, Greeks, and people of many other nationalities have coexisted in peace and harmony, as if they were one large family. Rugby is the national sport, although martial arts and chess are both extremely popular. Tigran Petrosian was born in Tbilisi and was world chess champion for many years. Relaxed, friendly, open and affectionate. These are the fundamental reasons why people often say that the citizens of this Caucasian Republic have a Mediterranean character. Georgia is a nation renowned for its creativity and successful musicians such as Kati Melua, who has been a top-selling artist in the United Kingdom. Jazz can be heard in many bars and cafes in the capital, a perfect way to spend an evening in this lively and spiritual city. Tbilisi is undoubtedly an essential piece of the great national jigsaw puzzle. Shota Rustaveli, one of the greatest contributors to medieval literature, wrote that the essential requirements for love are beauty, wisdom, generosity, intelligence, and wealth, and to be patient with powerful opponents. All these qualities are to be found in Georgia, a country in love with its history and proud of its roots.
Oh, 